Hey, it's Mr. Bass. I love pond fishing. I love fishing from the bank. It's a blast. And what I want to talk to you about today are the three jigs that you need as a pond fisherman. I'm going to show you what I think is the most important jig that you should be throwing and uh, explain why, and then kind of give you a few tips on how to use these jigs. So first and foremost, and this is not going to be a surprise if you watch my channel a lot, without question, you need a vibrating jig or a chatterbait. This is what I'm talking about when I say a chatterbait or a vibrating jig. This is a jig. As you can see, it's a jig. It's got a hook, but it has this metal blade on here that vibrates in the water. This is a killer jig, a killer bait, really on all bodies of water. But if you're fishing a pond, four bass, you have got to have you a chatterbait or two. Now, the great thing about bladed jigs is they're easy to find. They're everywhere. In fact, let me show you where I found the perfect chatterbait for pond fishing. Ready? Walmart. That's right. You can go down to your local Walmart and they have a huge selection of fishing tackle and tons of it cater to pond fishermen. Look what I got at Walmart. The original Z-Man chatterbait in white and black and blue. If you're throwing a chatterbait in a pond, you only need three colors. You need white, you need black and blue. The third color that you absolutely need is a very natural green pumpkin. You need white for clear water presentations, and especially if you're fishing ponds or little lakes or rivers from the bank that have a lot of bait fish in them, white's gonna be your go-to color. If you're fishing super dirty, muddy water, and in fact, I will put a link to a video that I just posted recently where I was catching a ton of fish in super muddy water, pond fishing, and I was throwing a black and blue bladed jig. You want dark colors, you've got to have a black and blue for sure. And you're going to throw green pumpkin, you can throw green pumpkin in stained water, you can throw it in clear water. The reason it works so well in clear water is it looks very natural. So anytime you've got a lot of visibility, throw the natural looking baits. A couple of reasons why it's so good. One, it goes through cover very well, especially grass. And a lot of times when you're pond fishing, you're fishing around grass a lot. This just tends to be part of the problem. They also can be fished around timber, wood, laydowns, around stumps, uh, rock pilings, those kind of things. They're fine there as well. In fact, if you're fishing around a ton of tree limbs and stuff like that, you can go with a version like this, um, cross eyes chatterbait that has two wire weed guards, nice stiff wire weed guards that help you fish it in cover. The other reason that it's so good is it's a search bait. There's only a couple of ways to locate the fish when you're fishing from, from the bank. One is you kind of look at the whole area and you look for points, lay downs, rocks or boulders that might be sticking up. You look for structure that the bass will be congregating around. Uh, you use your eyes and then you've got to go searching and searching takes time. You really want to be fishing as in catching fish, not searching, but you've got to search to find them. And the chatter bait is an awesome search bait. When I'm fishing from the bank with a bladed jig, I always start with a 3 8 ounce size. It's light enough that it's not going to get down and get hung up and stuff, but it's also heavy enough that uh, you are able to get it down in the water column when you need it to get down. The second jig that you really should have in your bag when you're pond fishing is a swim jig. A swim jig is another moving bait. It's another search bait. And it's very, very effective pond fishing. Here's a great little swim jig that you can throw 
this is called the Mobster Swim Jig by Booyah. It comes in two sizes, 5 16 and half ounce. You need about three colors when it comes to the swim jig. You need a black and blue, really nice black and blue. This is a Bill Lowen swim jig. Got a lot of bling in it. You need a white swim jig. And you need a natural swim jig, like this one here. This is a bluegill color, but you don't even need a bluegill color. Just again, plain green pumpkin works fine. Now, although a swim jig is just another search bait, it has some unique characteristics that the vibrating jig does not have. The first characteristic it has is it doesn't vibrate, <laughs> which is pretty obvious. There's no big metal blade on the front of this swim jig, right? Uh, and there's a couple of times when that matters. Sometimes the fish are just a little more finicky and they don't respond to all that vibration. They want something a little more subtle, a little more natural looking in the water. That's where the swim jig comes into play. The swim jig also can be used as a flipping jig. If you don't have flipping jigs with you, you can actually flip and pitch this jig around tree stumps, around laydowns, places where you would fish a normal jig, and you can fish it like a normal jig, or you can drop it in like you would a normal jig, let it go to the bottom, and then swim it up and out. Another reason why swim jigs are so great on ponds is because they also work great in the grass. They work great in shallow grass. You can skim them along the top of the water. You can skim them along the top of the grass. You can drop them down in holes in grass. You can run them parallel to the edges of the grass. So swim jigs are just great, great baits. Now, I still hold to, if I can only use one, I'm gonna go with chatterbait first, but the swim jig comes in close second for me. The final jig that you need when you are fishing for ponds is just a regular Arky style flipping jig. And it doesn't, the, the term Arky, don't let that throw you off, but an Arky head, let me show you this. I got this at Walmart. Again, here is the Arky bass jig. It's the original bass jig. And Arky's claim to fame is just this kind of round bulbous head. Um, and the line tie is straight up, almost a 90 degree line tie. <clears throat> and you just attach it and pitch it out there. You can cast this and drag it in on the bottom too. You can fish it that way. You can throw it around structure. And a lot of times the, the bite that you're looking for when you're flipping on an Arky jig is you're looking for a bite on the fall as the bait, as you throw the bait out there next to the stump and you watch it go down by the stump. A lot of times they'll hit it on the way down. You'll set the hook and get them out or you let it go to the bottom and then you will just hop it a little. A lot of times on the hops, they'll hit it. And then you can also swim this. So in some ways, the standard jig and the swim jig are kind of dual purpose, but there are times when they don't cross over. And so that's why I say you really should have some sort of a regular Arky style flipping and pitching jig as part of your pond arsenal as well. And again, no rocket science here, same sort of colors, black and blue, white, a natural green pumpkin sort of color. So I got these at Walmart as well. The pro model uh, jig from Strike King. This comes in a 3 8 ounce and a quarter ounce. I would go with a 3 8 ounce first, like this one here. This, you can kind of keep this simple. My chatter baits, I can go with 3 8 ounce. My regular jigs, I can go with 3 8 ounce. And quite frankly, your swim jig could be in that 3 8 ounce as well. Although swim jigs, I like to go a little lighter. A lot of times with a swim jig, I'm gonna throw quarter ounce on the swim jig. But if you don't wanna confuse anything, just say three eighths. I'm gonna throw three out eights, all three jigs that I don't have to worry about. And same colors for all three jigs. Other great uh, pond jig is the Thunderhawk Lures Grunt Jig. This is also three eighths of an ounce. Here's a black and blue one. 
Let me take it out and show you what it looks like. Look at that beauty. And again, it's got this nice kind of arky style head. This is a little pointier than the arky style head, but that's okay. And uh, this jig is going to catch you lots of fish. All right. So those are the types of jigs. Chatterbait. Swim jig. Flipping jig. Casting jig. Pitching jig. They're all one and the same. Now the next piece to this is jig trailers. Quite frankly, it doesn't matter if we're talking chatterbait or we're talking an arky jig or we're talking a swim jig. All of these jigs are designed to have a soft plastic trailer attached to the lure. And uh, it's all about creating and generating more action in the water to uh, attract strikes. It's also sometimes about creating bulk, adding bulk to your weight. And another key reason why you want soft plastic trailers on your baits is they also help regulate the rate of fall, how fast the bait falls through the water. And how fast or slow the bait moves through the water really matters. And this is one of those hard things where I can't really teach you about rate of fall. You have to experiment with rate of fall to figure out what the bass are looking for. If you get out there and you just pitch it and it drops and they bite it, great. You don't have to worry about it. But if they're not biting it, it may be because the jig's falling too fast or it's falling too slow. And then you've got to make adjustments. Trailers help you add weight or take reduce weight and that kind of thing. So... Trailers are very, very important. When it comes to a bladed jig, a vibrating jig, a chatterbait, that's one and the same. They're all That's what they're all called. Um, I like a swimming trailer, a trailer that looks like a fish in the water. This is a Yamamoto Zacco. And oh, by the way, all of these baits will be listed in the description below if you want to purchase them. There's links there. That helps the channel too, and I greatly appreciate that. There are times when you need more action in the water. And when that's the case, you may want to go with more of a flapping style, chunk trailer. So for example, uh, last year I was fishing in a super muddy lake in my kayak. And I instantly, when I saw how dirty, dirty the water was, I said to myself, I need my black and blue chatterbait. And then I thought, you know, I need more action in the water too than the Zacco. The Zacco isn't going to create enough commotion. So I pulled out one of my tried and true baits in black and blue, the Chigger Craw. This is one of my favorite jig trailers. I absolutely love it. It is a pretty simple crawdad trailer, but it has these big pinchers and they flop in the water quite a bit. So you can literally put this on the back of your chatterbait and uh, works really good if you need that commotion. It also, when you have a bait that's horizontal attached to your chatterbait, it's going to give you a few advantages over a more vertical presentation like the Zacco. When you're fishing a chatterbait through the water and it runs into uh, a stick or a laydown, what happens a lot of times is when the bait hits the stick, it tends to roll over like so. And when it does, the hook will get stuck in your little limb, tree limb or whatever, and you're caught. And that's just because this is a very rounded edge that just doesn't, it's not made to sit up straight. It rolls when you put it on, on itself. So having a flatter profile trailer like this Chigger Craw helps reduce that problem so that when the bait comes over the top of a tree limb, this Chigger Craw will actually help keep the bait upright so that it doesn't fall over when you're going over tree limbs. So when I need to create a, a ton more commotion or when I'm fishing around a lot of timber, I will put a, a chigger craw or a beaver style bait or something that gives me more of a flat surface 
that keeps it from rolling over. Same goes for the swim jigs. I like to put um, a chigger craw on the back of my swim jigs. Uh, sometimes I don't need that much commotion and you kind of have to play with that to figure out how much commotion the fish are looking for. If I need something a little more subtle, another one of my favorite baits to put on the back of a swim jig is a rage tail menace. Now the rage tail menace is a very subtle trailer. It does have little kickers that make some commotion. I find you can use this on a uh, chatterbait, you can use it on any kind of jigs, but I really like the Rage Menace on the back of a swim jig. The grunt with a little chigger craw trailer, man, that thing is money. Money, 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 money. Heck yeah, heck yeah. Woo, there's jig fishing, it's a lot of fun. In fact, I was just fishing with my buddy Dean two days ago, I broke out a jig. Same thing, an Arky style jig, started flipping around the edge of the grass and man, they were just crushing it. It was so much fun. So these are really the three jigs that you need when you hit the pond. Chatterbait, bladed jig, vibrating jig, swim jig, and an Arky style flipping and pitching jig. Thanks again for watching. I hope it was helpful and informative. If so, please subscribe to the channel, smash that like button, share the videos with your friends, like on Facebook would be awesome. Hit the notification bell to find out when my next video comes out. Until next time, this is Mr. Bass. Happy jig fishing!